Yes, the rumors are true. There will be an AP Anatomy and Physiology course, but not till 2024 for most people. In this video, I'm going to go over everything we know so far about the AP Anatomy and Physiology class that is going to exist in the near future. So stay tuned if you're at all interested in seeing what this course is going to be like and everything we know so far about it. So in all the materials that we've seen from the College Board, the course is going to start in the fall of 2024 for the 2024-2025 school year. Right now, there is no AP Anatomy and Physiology course that exists. Unless you're taking an Anatomy and Physiology dual enrollment course or at a local college or university, you really only have the high school equivalent of this course available to you at your high school. But there may be a lucky few of you who are actually taking a pilot version of this course this coming school year in the 2022-2023 school year, where a few select schools and teachers will be testing out the course and seeing how it goes for a full official launch in fall of 2024. We do know that the College Board posted a job in March of 2022 about the director who's going to lead the design of Advanced Placement Anatomy and Physiology for the College Board, and they're going to work with a whole bunch of advisors and other people to define what's on the course content and figure out what goes into this course. Now, we know for sure that there will be a course and exam description like there is for all the other AP courses, and if you're taking AP Anatomy and Physiology at your school right now, it may be very different from what the College Board says is going to be on the exam in the future. Right now, because there's no standardized curriculum for anatomy and physiology across the United States, every a and class may be a little bit different. Some teachers are complaining about this and worried that there'll be a lot of demand for the AP level course, which will take away some of their freedom with what they want to teach. And I've heard some teachers say it might suck the fun out of it if the College Board has a mandated curriculum that they have to teach. It'll depend on a school by school basis whether your school actually offers this course in 2024 and which versions of the class are going to still exist. You may still have a regular anatomy and physiology and an honors anatomy and physiology and then the AP level anatomy and physiology for you to choose from. It really all depends on the capacity that your school has for offering different courses. What we don't know if this is going to be a general anatomy and physiology course, vertebrate anatomy and physiology, human focused anatomy and physiology, but many colleges and universities do have a fundamentals of anatomy and physiology course which is primarily focused on human a &P. So it's like likely that this course will follow in suit and have a large human focus as well. What will this course cover? Well, most college level anatomy and physiology courses dive right into the subject material of a study of different systems, maybe followed by a little introductory information like fundamental terminology and a study of tissues. Then the course may offer a system by system approach to everything in the human body, including nervous system, circulatory system, reproductive system, which is how a lot of teachers like to teach it. Other teachers have more of a case study approach towards their teaching of anatomy and physiology. Other teachers go from a micro to macro scale and study lots of different organs and systems within the body at the same time. Even though anatomy and physiology is very heavy on memorization, which it will probably still be at the AP level, there are some skills that I'm sure the College Board will want to integrate that reflect the skills that are taught in a college level anatomy and physiology course. These are skills like being able to explain relationships between structure and function across all levels of organization, talking about homeostasis and homeostatic imbalances in the body and what happens when those occur, describing how organ systems interact, maybe even some developmental biology, and of course, application of this content to real world examples. We know for sure that there will be an exam for this course as well, which as most AP exams go, probably be a three hour test split into two parts, multiple choice and free response. Most AP science classes do have laboratory recommendations, meaning that the course is supposed to be taught with either specific labs or specific types of labs throughout the year. So if you're hoping to do dissections, I'm sure they'll probably be referenced or at least encouraged in the AP level course. We do know that the exam that goes along with AMP will be scored on a one to five like it is on all other AP exams. What we don't know is which colleges and universities will actually accept this exam for course credit. There has been a movement away from accepting AP course credit in a lot of places in recent years, but just having the experience of taking a college level anatomy and physiology course could be good for your academic career as well, even if your college doesn't take it for credit. Just like in all the other AP courses, there won't be one specific textbook that you have to buy, but if you're curious about what college level anatomy and physiology could look like, you might want to explore the OpenStax textbook which is available for free online to anybody who wants to access it. I'll put the link to that in the description below if you're curious in seeing what some college level anatomy and physiology reading looks like. If they're interested in anatomy and physiology, you may be interested in the route towards medical school as well. And a lot of people are wondering, would an AP level anatomy and physiology course in high school count towards your pre-med or medical school requirements? Now it may surprise you, but anatomy and physiology 
courses are often not required parts of medical school applications. You need a whole lot of other foundational science coursework, but anatomy is not necessarily one of them for most medical schools. On the MCAT or the exam you have to take to go to medical school, you should have experience with introductory biology, biochemistry, general chemistry, and organic chemistry. Kaplan says that additional courses in things like cell biology and anatomy could be helpful, but they're not necessarily requirements for you to have taken before you take the MCAT. Even though anatomy and physiology is not required for most medical school applications, it could be required for your major depending on what you choose to major in. So make sure you check with colleges and universities and peek at their major requirements listed on their website if that is a pathway that you're interested in and it may help you to decide whether or not you want to take anatomy and physiology in high school or not. Maybe you just want it for a great, challenging learning experience, but it could be tougher than most other anatomy and physiology courses that are offered in high school. And just be aware that when you're thinking about choosing this course or planning it out for the future, that it will most likely not be an easy AP to take. The biggest lingering question we have is what is going to be the nickname of this course? A lot of AP courses have fun nicknames like Apes, WAP, A-Push. So what will this one be? APAP? AP squared? App app? What do you think AP Anatomy and Physiology will be called? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know what other questions you have about the future AP A&P course. Be sure to subscribe as I learn more information about this course because I'll be putting out more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.